I'd like to buy some fancier and more comfortable chairs. Would that, would, would that just lead to me sitting down more, maybe? What a strange intro. Um, we're gonna look at the histology of the fallopian tube, also known as the uterine tube, or the oviduct. Uh, crucial bit of anatomy, really. Without the fallopian tube, none of us would be here because it is the site of uh, fertilization. So the fallopian tube connects the ovary to the uterus. This is how the ovum, the egg that's released from the ovary, passes along the uterine tube and into the uterus. Fertilization happens in the uterine tube. The embryo develops and implants into the uterus if all goes well. So if it's just a tube, is it just a simple tube? If we look at a cross section of the fallopian tube down the microscope, is it just a simple tube? What sort of cells are in there? And what does that tell us about its function? <laughs> the chair thing. <laughs> it's probably because I've been uh, sat down writing for much of the week. Sat down writing and then stood up a lot talking to students and then a lot of running. I mean, okay, no, whatever. So I don't know what animal this is from. Um, you can see the diameter of the tube there. Um, it's, it's not a huge tube, it's not a very thick tube, it doesn't need to be. Let's have a look. See what we got. That's the edge of the slide, that's where we <laughs> find the tissue. There we go. I haven't looked at this yet. All right, there we go. That's our tube. I'm on, my, I'm on my lowest power, so my objective lens here is four times magnification. My eyepiece lenses are 10 times, giving a total of 40 times magnification to my eyes. Um, how that magnifies for you exactly depends upon the size of your screen, but it gives you an idea. Um, but the spaces we're seeing in the middle there are uh, the lumen, but you can see that it's not just a simple tube with a circular lumen, it's a very highly folded lumen. So that's interesting. And then we can say, see that the edge there, that looks muscular. So we've got layers of muscle forming the wall of the tube. That makes sense because muscles are good building blocks. So that's going to be smooth muscle. And we can see some of the supportive elements moving in there to support the structures within the uterine tube. And we can see circles in there, so those will be blood vessels, right? The little arterioles and venules. And then on the outside, we can see there, we can see a serosa uh, or an adventitia, you know, a, a covering of cells and connective tissue. And we've got bigger blood vessels and nerves and what have you in there, which are supplying the um, supplying the blood and innovation and taking the lymphatics away from the uterine tube and we can see um, part of that connection there. Okay, so that layer of cells closest to the lumen, so the, the white is the lumen, that's the space, that's where the ovum is going to travel down. The cells directly up against that space are very dark and purple, which I'm very excited about. Let's go and have a look at that. That will be the mucosa. And if you've looked at other areas of the body, you will be recognising these terms. Um, it's a similar layout. So we've got... Oh, that's a bit bright. Let's see if I can... There we go. Um, so we've got a mucosa. So we've got a layer of cells there. So that's going to be an epithelium. Uh, very, very wiggly, lots of surface area. So that's an epithelium. And there will be a basement membrane that those cells are all sat on, supporting them. And then deep to that, that's the lamina propria. So we've got supportive cells in there and supportive connective tissues and there will also be uh, small blood vessels we can see 
we can see that circle there is likely a small blood vessel and other little circles over here. In fact, there's a bigger circle with blood cells within it. Um, so what sort of epithelium is this is always the first question we're going to ask, right? Um, oh, well that looks interesting. Um, let's bump up to my highest magnification. So this is a uh, 40 times objective, so now essentially I'm at 400 times magnification to my eyes, and we're looking at individual cells there, arranged in a row, and those cells are taller than they are wide. So this is a columnar epithelium, we see columnar cells there, and um, they are in a single layer, so this is a simple columnar epithelium, right? And if we move around we see that simple columnar epithelium throughout all of these folds. So that means that um, the simple columnar epithelium is the layer in contact with lumen um, where the ovum will be, will be travelling. Uh, now, the next question is, is this epithelium ciliated? Um, if I go back to that section there, can you see, so um, I'm looking at, let me move that just over there a little bit. So the, um, the nuclei of the cells is staining dark purple, and then the cytoplasm of many of the cells is a pinker colour, and then we can see... Um, a lighter brush border extending into the lumen from our columnar epithelial cells. So there, yes, we can see cilia. Those are cilia. Uh, and if I move along over there, I can see another section with cilia. So, um, yeah, the epithelium of the uh, fallopian tube, of the mucosa inside the fallopian tube, is ciliated. So the cilia are going to help move the ovum, the egg, along the tube from the ovary to the uterus. But we can see some other cells there. Not all of these cells are ciliated, and some of these cells are much darker, and they're darker all the way to the lumen. So we've got a mix of cells. Um, I think there are more ciliated cells towards the distal part of the uterine tube, as in the bit of the tube closest to the ovary. So I think the proportion of ciliated cells changes. But the other cells we can see there, which are not ciliated and are very dark all the way to the, the lumen, those are PEG cells. The PEG cells uh, will be secreting a fluid into the lumen, which makes sense, right? If you had a dry tube, even with your cilia, how are you going to move the ovum along the tube effectively? How are the spermatozoa going to swim up and meet the ovum and do fertilization and stuff? So those PEG cells are making fluid and putting it into the tube. So now we've got fluid for the ovum and the spermatozoa to move through much more easily and the cilia can generate currents and move the, uh, the ovum across. Now we'll see that the muscle layers also do peristalsis and will probably help with movement of the egg along there. So those are the two main cell types, the PEG cells and the ciliated cells. I think there's a third type that gets identified, which is possibly kind of like, um, it's a different form of the PEG cell or slightly different secretory cell. But that's it. Those are our cells in the mucosa. Um, that's very nice. And then, like I say, so between um, the, 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 there we go. So the, the layer then supporting the mucosa is the lamina propria. And we can see blood vessels in there. If we're really lucky, we might. So I guess we might see a nerve. But we're seeing lots of little tiny blood vessels, right? And you can see how tiny they are, because you can only fit a few blood cells in them. Um, all right. So let me pop back out to the 20 times objective. So essentially 200 times magnification to my eyes. Um, and then if we move from the mucosa, if we move out, well let's go, um, that's quite nice, so there's our mucosa, 
up against the lumen, supported by a lamina propria. Then as we go into the, the wall of the, of the uterine tube, we are seeing uh, little wiggly cigar-shaped nuclei. So we're looking at smooth muscle cells there. So we have an inner circular layer of smooth muscle cells wrapping around the tube, which can squeeze the tube and reduce its diameter. Then as we go further out, we can see some smooth muscle cells that have been cut through. Um, so these are running longitudinally along the tubes. We have a longitudinal layer. And that's very typical of uh, muscular tubes that we see in the body. We see this throughout the gut, right? Um, you have a layer of cells that can squeeze, and you have a layer of cells that can change the length of the tube, and by doing that, you can squeeze things along the tube. Um, if I pop back up to a higher power, just for funsies, because there's not a great deal to look at here, it's a, it's a pretty nice, simple structure. Um, you can see some of those wiggly cigar-shaped nuclei that... Uh, and we can just about see the wiggly shape of the cell as well that show us that this is a partially contracted smooth muscle cell or collection of cells grouped together. Um, they're in layers, so probably during sectioning or, or when the, the tissue was prepared, when you dehydrate it, these layers might, might have come apart. That space there is not a real, a real space. And as we go further out, you can see um, cells cut in a different fashion, but it's not a thickly muscular tube in this instance, is it? Um, there's the ten times, let's go back out to the four times. So there's our lumen um, with a very wiggly mucosa, giving lots of surface area. Do you get the sense now why it's wiggly and why there's lots of surface area? Because these cells are helping the ovum along the tube. And of course, once the ovum becomes fertilized, it will become a blastocyst. So that fluid that's been made by the cells there will be pulled in to the blastocyst. The very early embryo, in fact, it gets called a blastocyst because it pulls fluid inside itself and makes a cyst inside itself. And that fluid then is going to be the source of nutrients of the very, very early, very, very tiny embryo when it implants into the endometrium of the uterus uh, before the placenta forms. When the placenta forms, then the, it'll, there'll be a link to the maternal blood supply and, and uh, the placenta can take over. But there you go, you can get a sense of those layers of smooth muscle there. And the final thing, just to just as a little nod, um, is the, the serosa. Um, so that, that, well, that outer layer there where we're seeing other blood vessels and what have you. Um, if I zoom in, if I go to a higher power, I don't know if we're gonna see anything particularly interesting, but hey, don't know if you don't look, do you? Um, There you go. So that those are the muscle layers, and then there's not a lot of stain on the serosa or the adventitia, the thin layer of covering of the uterine tube that we see with most organs. You know, just covering. So when you basically when you're dissecting, you look at the organ; it's got a shiny surface. It's the serosa or the adventitia you're looking at, and then the muscle is deep to that. All right. The other reason this anatomy is so important and us understanding the cellular structure is so important is because of um, ectopic pregnancies. So about uh, one in a hundred pregnancies are ectopic. That means that the embryo implants into um, somewhere that is not the endometrium of the uterus. So it implants into a tissue outside of the uterus. Um, Many of these ectopic pregnancies will resolve themselves um, and fail and be resorbed and removed. But 96% of ectopic pregnancies implant into uh, the mucosa of the uh, uterine tube. And they can trigger um, the development of uh, blood flow um, and kind of trigger continued development of the blastocyst into the embryo. And as 
the embryo grows and as blood vessels are recruited into this site, um, this becomes more and more dangerous. Um, this is likely to kill the mother, although um, medical treatments are very, very good at recognising this, responding to this and saving the mother's life. And it's not possible for the embryo to develop and go to term if it doesn't if it implants into the uterine tube, there's just nowhere for it to grow. It can't be supported. Um, so that is um, a failure if it implants into this tissue. So this tissue has evolved to make sure that that ovum, that blastocyst really, if it gets fertilized, gets down to the uterus, implants into the endometrium of the uterus and uh, forms a placenta and the uterus is a big muscular bag and of course can get a lot bigger and maybe we'll look at the uterus next week but uh, now I know what the inside of the fallopian tube actually looks like so I will find it easier to explain the gross anatomy to my students and uh, the embryology and functional anatomy and stuff cool it's always good to look at good it's always good to look at these things in different scales because you better understand what's going on cool see you next week